Dan Murphy, how are you? I'm not too bad, you know. It's snowing in fucking Sheffield in April 26, 2016. But apart from that, it's all right. But, I mean, I've had a bit of that myself. Yeah, today, it's which, April which, you know, and it's snowing. What it, it is. It's the end the of the world as we know it. It is. The end of the world is a, is a good segue because a, a developer who's Ooh. made games that have sort of ties to the kind of underworld, the end of the world, death, kind of, yeah, drink box studios is what I'm mm. getting at. Um, I would suppose best known for Guacamelee. Definitely. Uh, which, is a, which is a fantastic, fantastic game uh, that has now been kind of released on everything. But I think probably was best at home on the PlayStation Vita. Mm. Fair enough? Yeah, yeah, certainly that's where it made its name. And I think Drinkbox to this day still credit the Vita for being all Space Bob Attack came out on that as well. I think oh, it's yeah, the only did, on that, yeah. their first game, or at least their first big this, game. Yes, and, this is correct. The, the thing yeah. is, Dan, I want to ask you, because people are looking at this video, hopefully. then they. I mean, I don't know if maybe there are people who watch YouTube videos without watching them, just, just listen to them. Oh, I do that sometimes. I, I, I hope, oh, okay, so I hope you're not one of those kind of people, oh, but you are. But what, what you are seeing, if you're watching this, is a game called Severed, which is Drinkbox's latest game. As um, as we record, it's out today. You can read Dan's review of it. He really liked it. Really However, did. what I think this video is going to end up being, as much as a review of the game, is a discussion about how come they're making a PS Vita exclusive. Mm. Well, I think, as I was just about to allude to, I think they just really like the Vita. I think they really like... Well, uh, I really like the Vita, I think. Well, I think they feel... Drinkbox, I've seen interviews with them and stuff, that they feel not like... Like honored, or no, I'm trying. I can't think of the bloody word. It's like the word that means like responsible Inde- for it. Yeah, that's the one. Like, I don't think they feel indebted to it per se, but it's like the Vita is what got them known, and it's a console yeah. that obviously they feel at home on. And so, yeah, they've released Severed, which co- it will put, pro- I imagine, will probably come to iPads at some point, but we see, at the ha- minute, hang on. it's can only be on stop the you there. I want to stop you there because that is something that I want to talk about because I can understand making a Vita exclusive because the Vita is a great con. I don't actually know where mine is, but I do like it a lot when I know where it is. Yep. Um, the problem is with games like Guacamelee, that game is a traditional video game, yep. it could be on any system and ended up on every system. Like with the Super Turbo Hyper Championship, whatever it was called. No, that was spot on, well done. Yeah. Oh, was it? Bloody hell. Well, that's not bad. But that could end up on anything because it's a traditional video game. Um, people watching this now are probably noticing this is not mm. a traditional video game. This is a game that requires the touchscreen yeah. of the Vita, correct? Yeah, so it ex- is. Explain to us how it works. Well, basically, the simp- as, I, as I wrote in my review, pretty much word for word, the simplest way, the easiest way to get it into your head of what this is and how it works is that it's Fruit Ninja. But okay. to say it's just Fruit Ninja would be un- underselling it a bit. Because under, un- in Fruit Ninja, all you do is swipe to get fruit and avoid bombs. That's that's it. To be to be fair, people really do enjoy oh, or did Ninja's enjoy really Fruit good. Ninja. It's really yeah, good. Yeah. It's like very satisfying. Just to, you know, your so, touch is coming and doing stuff yeah. on the screen. But with... And it's the same with, the, um, with Severed. But how it's different is like... It's a dungeon crawler and the combat... Is the touch screen. You right. Slash with your finger as the sword at the enemies, which are really, really nicely designed. And, and it then, does look nice, I will say. Yeah. And if they attack you with their limbs or whatever, you have to swipe in the opposite direction to block it. And then they might be stunned for a while and you can go to town on the bodies un- um, exposed. Then there's other enemies where you have to. They'll like grow bubbles or get bigger or open eyes, and you have to like get rid of them, close them, make them go smaller again, and then they'll be exposed. And then you can batter them. So there's a few different ways how you stop them attacking you. Then you just slice them with your finger to get the enemy um, the health down. And if your focus meter is full when you kill them, they'll go into like the other few couple like a couple of seconds to slice off their limbs to use as like upgrade points, pretty much. So yeah, that's how it so- works. So, because there's a couple of things here. Like, first of all, when you first started describing it there, I thought about Infinity Blade. Um, Can't say I've ever played it, but okay, it's, I've it's, heard it's, it. It's a similar sort of thing. Like, it's, a, it's again, it's on it's on iPads and I suppose iPhones, and it's that kind of same thing where it's like the melee combat. You use you know different inputs to like, attack and defend. Um, but I'm wondering because something I, I think I want to think of Dreambox is like they they make games that ha- they look great and, and again I don't know if there's even much point talking about it because you can see it you can literally yeah. see it. The style of this is literally Guacamelee, but a bit eerier. Like, the, like you, I think I can't, it doesn't really explain where it is or when it it's is. Kind of, the, it's, first, it's first person and it's yeah, 3D, yeah. isn't it? So, so it's, yeah. the unambiguous like it's the world's very unambiguous. And it's a 
interesting right. thing to go into is what drives drive, drives run a bit story wise because I think story falls a little bit flat for me but the world itself is really eerie because it's like I don't know if it's the underworld or just a place that's been run over by monsters and been well, deserted. It, just, it could just be their art style. They have quite a distinctive mm. art style, the way just, they make games. Yeah, but it's just like a, the place is just very desolate, very creepy. There's uh-huh. qu- All the monsters are really weird and cool, but like creepy. And then there's like the place is meant to be like deserted, but then there'll be a two-headed bird with only a mouth for a face that'll come and talk to you. There's like this old woman <laughs> right. scourging around called the so Wanderer. There are, there are like characters that, really that talk. Then it's not just it's not voice acted. It's just okay. text. But yeah, there, there is a couple who talk. Yeah, is it funny at all? And I ask that because I think of Guacamole and I think of I mean the whole thing of Guacamole, the whole concept is funny. Um, but also like, I think of missions like where you have to pick up the chickens and throw them into mm. the you know stuff. Like, is it? Does it have that kind of... I would call that sort of signature drink box sense of humour. I think the two-headed bird is quite a funny character. It says yeah, some yeah. funny things. But mostly known. That's a thing I did mention in that review. The atmosphere is very different here. Like I said, this world's very eerie, very like quiet and creepy and like uh, mysterious. Whereas, whereas in Guacamole, it was a lived-in world, wasn't it? Yeah, it was yeah. a town. It was a Mario, mariachi-filled happy yeah. land. This is very, very different. It's the same art style. Still beautiful, but the tone's very different. So generally speaking, then, like you know, you really liked it. You, you yeah. well liked it. You like severed. Yeah, definitely. It's, I gave it. A, I gave it an eight in my review because yeah. I just found the game. If you're, I think it took me about 10, 10 or eleven hours, and I was de- like, I complete hundred percent completed it, even though the fucking trophy didn't pop. Calm. Oh dear. Yeah, don't don't talk to me. But I hundred yeah. percent completed it, and that took me about eleven hours, I'd say. So and a lot of that it's time. Substantial. Yeah, yeah, but a lot of that time is the guacamole thing where the same thing like the same thing as guacamole where you're going back going back backtracking yeah. to find hidden areas and stuff so a lot of that's not you know not with combat but i found because of that the combat to me because it is a gimmicky kind of concept it never got yeah. boring to me i just didn't i felt they kept either giving me different no, the upgrades just make you more powerful than that bit super fearless really but like they give you there's an eye upgrade which freezes enemies and then there's mm-hmm. a jaw upgrade which can steal their buffs and then enemies themselves are either getting like more armor, like or just getting more powerful. And there's different enemies getting introduced to right near the end. And I just mm-hmm. thought because I was changing enough, and because the enemies were changing enough, well, um, it just kept me entertained all the way through. Like the outline of every fight is pretty much the same. Well, it is the same. You go in, you you know, you go into an, account, an encounter. There'll be there's up to seven enemies at once, but that was only one one time. Usually three or four. Then you have to like rotate the camera to face them. Right. And because they'll do attacks differently, you have to make sure you're facing the enemy that's attacking you at the right time, or you'll get damage. And that's like the the that's where the challenge comes in. You've got to time you you know you got to think who to attack when, which enemy do I leave till later because it's more powerful, but won't attack me straight away unless provoked. I'll get rid of the ones that are, attack quick, but not a lot. So you've got to like work out which ones you want to kill beforehand, and you've got to like make sure they don't hit you. But um. Yeah, it's, it's, so that's it's the, the outline good. of the fight. But yeah. The colouring in iOS phone was different enough to keep me entertained until the end. Even though some might find it gets boring quickly, but I never did to me. I mean, it sounds good, but I have, I'm have i a bit worried because, like, or even. It's weird, like, if, if you have a Vita, then, yeah. like, no one's making exclusives for it, so it's mm-hmm. kind of a no brainer. But at the same time, a lot of people who own a Vita have kind of accepted that it's finished and put it away like I say I'm not, I'm not joking I actually well, it's the Japanese game can't machine. think where mine is it's the Japanese game machine an indie port machine isn't it that's what it is and then it's, so it is really good that you know that a new exclusive is coming to it because you think every exclusive it has has come to other stuff now yeah I mean even Tearaway which is the best exclusive was going to PC. remade for it Danganronpa has come to PC the only thing they right. still got is Fauna 4 Golden which was like a PlayStation yeah, 2 remake wasn't it I was going to say that was that's just yeah like a, a re-up of Persona 4 so it's like yeah, I, don't, I don't think you can count that exactly it, it sounds good um, I guess I, I, I'm just I'm, I have reservations because I <sighs> The Vita is one of the things like I have to get it out. Okay, now I've got to update it. Now I realise I've got to delete stuff to fill yeah. it on. It's 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 a machine that should have delivered, and I don't want this to become about that because it's not fair. Because mm. this is a review of the game, and basically you're saying you really really like yeah, it. Yeah, I did, and I won't say it's without faults because with how no. you hold it, I've got I've got my Vita in my hand now actually. Because okay. how you hold it and how you play it, you you're gonna hold the Vita in your left. Well, if I'm right-handed, to this side. You hold the Vita in your left hand because uh-huh. you have to move with the analog stick. 
and like change direction and stuff. And then when you're fighting, you've got to fight with your right hand, not holding the Vita. So it's one handed and then you're swiping. I right. found that after a while to get quite awkward and I never could settle on whether I liked having it on the table and just swiping right. or having it in my hand. I feel like it would have been a lot better if they made it so in combat the bumpers made you turn your enemy. And I, I really don't know how left handed people are going to play it. But They're going to have to use the right hand to combat, I'd imagine. Because the right hand log stick doesn't move the character either. They have to not. I, have to, I guess they have to make it completely touch interface because if it does come to you know platforms like the iPad, they don't have buttons at exactly. all. Exactly. So, it, hmm. well, they don't have an analog stick either. So I just it was True. weird. And it's, I, I thought they would have benefited by making it so the bumpers could turn. Also, mm-hmm. other things I didn't particularly like. I think the puzzles in this element, you know, like in Guacamelee, when you find the brain and the heart. For like extra stamina or you know, yeah. but magic or whatever, I thought the puzzles for that were largely really quite easy and dull, and um, they felt like just in there to make the game longer a bit and push it out. And as I said, the story felt a little flat to me. But the combat itself, which is what you're there for with that type of game and how it looks, and everything, I thought it was really good and I really really enjoyed it. And do you know actually, I can actually see it coming to PS4 at some point because it does have the touchpad the PS4, and no one's used it yet. Mm. So maybe well, not not like that, but I mean, it's not it's not touch screen the way it's not. No, it's I don't not. Know. But maybe I suppose it's possible. Know. It's possible. Um, we'll find out. But, you know. Um, I'm sure Dan will shout about it on Twitter at Mabroski if it does, because he really loves this game. Um, I'm at Jeeva Surf and of course at God's Geek. And if you do enjoy this sort of stuff, and if you like us, like uh, two dollars a month, like which is barely. I mean, it's a pound or something in the UK. That basically gives you uh, early access to videos that we do regular stuff. We've got some new stuff coming up, actually, as well. Um, that's patreon.com slash Geek. Otherwise, uh, you can go to goddessgeek.com, the actual website, because we are a website, and you can read Dan's full review of the game there. Dan, thanks for your time. No worries. See you later. And we'll catch you later. Bye-bye. Go to back to God is Geek Patreon. <laughs>